Hey everybody, Pastor Jeremy here, and I am so glad you are watching. We miss you guys so, so much, but at least you're here. We're together watching it online, and I just want to tell you thank you. We miss you. We love you. We can't wait to see you again, but for now, this will do. So if you guys got any questions or your parents got any questions, you guys can email me. You guys can Facebook me. You guys can call me. I want to hear from you. To help us with our lesson today, we have the lovely Miss Anna Beth. All right, guys, please. This is not... What are you doing, Tommy? Tommy, this, what are you doing? This isn't... How do you How do you know? We've been going to church together for 10 years. Tommy, get off my stage. Yes, sir. Well, he just ruined that segment today, but that's kind of what Tommy does. So I got Pastor Joe here coming, and he's going to talk to you and your parents. So here's Pastor Joe. Hey, this is Pastor Joe, campus pastor here at Warrington Campus. Just wanted to talk to parents today about uh, being able to just connect with your kids. I know you hear a lot of that going on and just to trying to defuse the fear factor and everything that's going on with this uh, virus. And so, you know, I love the scripture and I talk about it often. Uh, Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. And so during this time of quarantine and close quarters with your spouses and and and, and kids, it is a uh, can be a challenging time, but it can be a real good time where kids, I'm talking to you right now, you need to teach mom and dad how to have some fun, have some games, make sure everybody's laughing and just have some good fellowship together. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. I keep rehearsing that and saying that to myself because I find myself watching the news and start reasoning and trying to figure out things in the future that is unknown. We just don't know. Everything changes from day to day, from uh, week to week. And so we got to make the best of this situation and honor God and he will honor us. And so the, there's a scripture in, in James and it says, uh, it talks about draw close to him and he will draw close to us. And so take some extended time to, to just really pray. Pray for those people that are working in the grocery stores and the people that are caring for other sick people, the nurses and the doctors and all the essential people. God bless you. Make sure that you guys are tuning in to all the broadcasts and the, and the Facebook stuff. Pastor Jeremy's got some good stuff in, in store for you guys. Stuff to encourage you and cause you to grow in your relationship with him. God bless you and we'll see you real soon in May, hopefully. Everybody, welcome back and thank you, Pastor hey, Joe, for... Sorry, we're going to make sure Xander might have to scoot up, scoot back just a little bit this way. That's Tommy, like... what are you doing? Social distancing, six feet. Go, you're interrupting, go. Okay. Come okay. back, it's okay. Guys, welcome back, and this is the lovely Miss Sandry, and she's going to help us with the memory verse today. Say, Isaiah 26. Isaiah 26. In verse 3. In verse 3. You will keep. You will keep. In perfect peace. In perfect peace. All. All. Who trust in you. Trust in you. All whose thoughts. All whose thoughts. Are fixed on you. Are fixed on you. Do you guys think you can do it one more time? Let's do it one more time. Isaiah 26, Isaiah 26, verse 3. Verse 3. You will keep, you will keep in perfect peace. In perfect peace. All who trust, all who trust in you. In you. All whose thoughts, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. Are fixed on you. Now, Miss Andrew, you think you can do it by yourself? Yes. Well, let's go. <laughs> you want me to help you? <laughs> You want to help? You want to do it one more time with me? All right. Isaiah, Isaiah 26.3. 26, 26, you will keep, you will keep in, perfect peace, in perfect peace all who trust, all who trust in, you, in you. All whose thoughts, all whose thoughts are, fixed on you. are fixed on you. Good job. Hey, this is time for our offering. We just want to tell you guys, you know, you can send an offering to the church. Guys, you can collect change and drop it off at church or bring it to the church. It doesn't matter. We're starting a fund to help people in our community. 
Um, let's pray over the offering now, and uh, we'll go on to the rest of the service. Father God, we love and we bless you. We thank you for that we were able to give. We ask you that this church can be a blessing to our, com our community, and we know as we give, it'll be given back to us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you. Hi, I'm Evangeline. Oh, and hi, I'm Aiden. Um, guys, please, uh, you guys are not six feet apart. This is not enough. Tommy, yeah. get off my stage. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Jesus and his disciples entered the land on Mount of the Olives. Yuck, olives. He sent two disciples ahead of them and told them that they need to get a young colt and bring it to him. That thing was like a Lamborghini. Vroom, vroom. And they said that if anyone asked, they'd tell them that the master told them to and that it would be back soon. We're borrowing it. We're not stealing it. Once they brought it to the Lord, they said they threw their robes on it and so that the Lord would have something to sit on. Man, they're going to get fur all over their clothes. As they were walking down, everybody threw their robes and leafy branches. <laughs> Who knows what was on that road? The Lord was the center of the parade. They were like, Hosanna! Hosanna! Now come, be, come back next week for the rest of it. What? We have to wait a whole week? This is terrible! Thank you, Evangeline and Aiden. You guys did a great, great job. I love both of you so much. No, Tommy, you can't come up here. Stop. No, no. There's only one person. You don't have to be six foot apart. You know what? Go see Miss Amy and she'll take care of you. I promise. I love Tommy so much. But think about this. Imagine how excited you would be to see Jesus riding into the city on a donkey and people and screaming and yelling, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. They were so excited. You see, they thought Jesus was coming to set up a new government and he would be the king. You see, they lived under a harsh foreign government and they thought that this would be the answer. But you know what? Jesus was, what Jesus was doing was, he came to give life, eternal life, physical life, emotional life, and a ton of it. Listen to what John 10.10 10 says. The thief comes, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and destroy. I have come, and that's Jesus talking, that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. Last week, I was made aware of a question. Was God mad at us because of all this stuff with the virus? The answer is no. Or why does God let all this bad stuff happen? Well, he doesn't. You see, when Adam and Eve sinned way back at the beginning, it introduced death, sickness, fear, and lack into the world. Let's go back to John 10.10. 10. The thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and destroy. But Jesus comes that we may have life and that we may have it more abundantly. The thief is the same one that tricked Adam and Eve, Satan. He kills, he steals, he destroys people's life, he destroys people's health, he destroys their peace, and he takes their money. But Jesus came to defeat the devil, and he did it when he died on the cross for us, and God raised him from the dead. But all that stuff the devil does is still going to be around till Jesus comes back to the earth and finishes everything and makes the world the way that he attended. But Jesus gave us the power to beat the devil in the ways he tries to hurt us. No matter what, if we have Jesus in our heart, the worst that can happen is that we die and go to heaven. Listen to what James 1.17 says. Whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming to us from God our Father, who created all the lights in the heaven. He never changes or cast a shifting shadow. God gives us good and perfect gifts. The bad things can't come from God because God doesn't change. Hey everybody, welcome back to, well, my kitchen. We had to do a little venue change 
for uh, our object lesson here today. And I want to do an object lesson to show you that God's good things and the bad things that come from elsewhere don't mix. Okay? So remember, we're talking about how God gives us good gifts and is incapable of doing the bad things. So, right now, there's a lot of things going on in the world, right? And we're talking about COVID-19 and this virus that's making people sick and sometimes die. So right now, there are people dying. There's people getting sick. One of the things that is happening is because of the virus, several the businesses have had to shut down. And you know, there might be some of you whose parents are not working right now. And that's a that's a pressure because, well, you gotta have money to do everything. But we're gonna talk about that, so don't be afraid. And then the biggest thing about this virus is there's people afraid everywhere. People are afraid. And see we so we got a good amount of water right there. And um but these represents the bad things. Everybody say the bad things. The bad things. All right. Well, with all those things that are going on right now, well, let's just talk about it. It says we're worried about the people dying from the virus or people dying in general. And guess what? If we have Jesus in our heart, the only thing that can happen is we go to heaven. So John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. So we take some oil and we pour it in. Then we're worried about people getting sick with the virus, right? Well, the Bible says in 1 Peter 2.24 that by the stripes of Jesus... We are healed. Jesus has paid the price already for our healing. So we take some more of the oil and we'll pour it in. The next thing is provides. God supplies all our needs. Philippians 4.19 says, My God shall supply all your needs. So God will provide for us. And then the last one is this. There's a lot of people afraid. I go to Walmart and I feel people afraid. Well, the Bible says in 1 John 4, 18, it says perfect love, and perfect love is Jesus, cast out all fear. So we're going to take some more oil, we're going to put it in there. And as you can see, look, the oil which represents Jesus and all the good things is on top. The water is on the bottom. But you might say, well, well, that's all fine and good, but what happens, well, when life happens? Right now, most of you are stuck at home. Are you stuck at home, Perry? Mm -hmm. Is it getting really boring? Yeah. It is? You're getting tired of your brothers? Mm -hmm. So, every, you guys are stuck at home, everything's boring, and it's like this. Your world right now is just moving slowly, but it's still moving. It's still moving, and things are starting to get mixed up. Now, for some of you, or maybe your parents out there, life right now is really crazy. It's crazy, 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 crazy. You don't know if you're going to go to work. You don't know about the virus. You're trying to protect your family. Or, or you're just worried. You're feared. It's all crazy. And that's all you hear all the time. Well, remember, Jesus gives us the good things. And even in all the craziness, look at that. Look at that, Perry. The oil is still on the top, and the water is still on the bottom. God gives us, God's word doesn't mix with all the bad stuff. God is always still on top. Thank you, Jesus. Now, Jesus came to earth and lived a perfect life and died on the cross for us. And God raised them three days later. And that's what we're going to be talking about next week with Easter. But the first step of allowing God to do all the good things in our life is by asking Jesus into our heart. We've got to put him in charge. We've got to believe in our heart and say with our mouth that Jesus paid our price and God raised them from the dead. Now to do that, if you've never done that, you want, I want to make sure I have Jesus in my heart. I want to make sure that God is able to do all the good things in my life. If you want that and you've never done it today, I want you to pray with me. So can you pray with me? And I know you have Jesus in your heart, but can you help me to pray with me? All right. Dear Jesus, 
Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I choose this day to live my life after your heart. I believe you came to earth, lived the perfect life, died on the cross for me, and God raised you from the dead. I know my life will never, ever be the same again. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, hey, if that's the first time you've done that, tell your parents and let them know so we can pray with you. I'm so happy that you did that. Now, before we go, I want to pray our memory verse that Miss Zandri went over with us today. So I'm going to pray over it. And I would say, Heavenly Father, I ask you to keep us in perfect peace. Help us trust in you and help us keep our thoughts fixed on you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hey guys, thanks for watching. We miss you. Look for updates this week. We got some special, special things this week. So tell your parents to be looking on Facebook. Have a great day. I wanted to come today and encourage you. You know, once again, it's kind of crazy times and we are all learning how to relive our lives and to reparent. And I just wanted to talk to you about something that stood out to me um, Wednesday night when we were having prayer um, with live. It was awesome. I was at home making dinner and listening and praying along with Pastor and the staff. And I just really felt like God was talking to me about we're spending a lot of time petitioning him and asking him and going to him with our fears and our needs. And I really believe that that's good and that's what God wants. But I also felt like we needed to take the time to set aside to do nothing but praise him for who he is because when we praise him it puts us in the right perspective to remember who he is and how good he is and how great he is and how strong he is and really roots in us that no matter what our circumstances look like god is still faithful and he's still loving and i just wanted to read psalm 34 1 it says i will praise the lord at all times i will constantly speak his praises and i just wanted to encourage you to make sure that you are taking the time to remind yourself of how great God is and to praise him and to honor him. We are praying for you. We love you. If you need something, reach out to us. We want to be there for you. You know, even when this isn't going on, we want to be there for you. And we're always available. Um, you can email me. You can Facebook message me. You can text me. And just reach out to us. And we want to do whatever we can for you. We love you guys. And we can't wait until we can meet together again in person.